So you hear a noise, uh, something's outside, you check your phone, oh, it looks like somebody's out there, but you can't tell if they have a firearm or not. But you have to make a quick decision. What are you going to do? Which one are you going to grab? You have to decide. What are you going to do? It's a very difficult decision to make in a spontaneous moment. What do you grab? Let's talk about this a little more. So you all know the pros and cons between lethals and less lethals. And my goal is not to compare and contrast these, but to basically go through some of the decision making of what you might have to think about in terms of what they offer in terms of size and power and and function relative to a particular situation. So, but before I get started and I touch anything, I want to assure you that this is unloaded. There's no ammo inside. It is uh, completely empty and you can, I can check the slide visually and by feel and there's nothing there. So this is completely empty. This is Glock 17. And basically I just have it set up for demo purposes today in comparison to the pepper ball TCP. And right off the bat, you can tell that the TCP has a bigger bore. It's a little bit more chunky. They're actually not dramatically different in size. Uh, but uh, as you can see, they, there are some differences. There are functional differences and there are obviously power differences and these are the things that we just have to keep in mind. Um, this one, I, I personally choose to use this if I see that someone appears to be unarmed. Now, the reason why this is difficult is because there are so many micro guns, even though I think this thing is tiny, it is very tiny compared to what I'm used to with the TCP. There are micro guns that make this thing look big, but for me, this is the perfect size for my hand and the perfect size, and I don't carry this gun, so that's not an issue. Um, I don't carry this one either, but I throw it in a bag sometimes, but it is just bulky and fat and, and it has its limitations in terms of carry. Um, but that aside, you have to make a decision. It's really difficult. I've, I have a previous video where I talk about the use of cameras. And I think if you're going to use a less lethal and you go to pull this one and you're at home, you need to check those cameras and at least have a quick way to check that on your phone so you can assess the situation and decide, is this person a, a person who looks like they've been working and they, it, but it's very difficult to know if they have a firearm on them because of the size. And so there is the, the way of thinking by some people that always go for the firearm because that's gonna be, you'll never be outgunned or over, um, the other person will not have more power uh, unless they're, they're packing a rifle. But that comes with legal concerns and limitations. If you, they were unarmed and you have a firearm, you're, you're escalating the situation. Uh, very difficult decision-making process. If you go with this, 99% of the time, you're probably making the right choice. And I'm, I'm a big fan of um, the less lethals for that reason. I tend to fall on the side of I go with the less lethal unless I absolutely can confirm that the person has a firearm. And in that case, you know that there's a person on your property who has a firearm or it is a person that has expressed a threat to you verbally, a person you know who's coming to harm you um, or a person who's coming on your property in the middle of the night uh, and you know that this is not someone that you're expecting. These are all times that you definitely want to go with the firearm, but anything else, if it's daytime, someone's knocking on your door, they're suspicious, uh, I go with this. That's my, my way of thinking. And I think I see a lot of talk about one or the other. You know, th for a lot of people, this is their lethal, and I completely get that. Uh, they, they don't have to think about this decision. They go for their less lethal, uh, and they've got it tuned up, or they have a rifled version and it is at lethal levels, and they're perfectly happy with the legal risk that they're taking. Uh, there is significant legal risk to tuning these up uh, and really hurting someone if they are unarmed. You, you're walking a fine line, and, and if you're one of those folks who are already, because of some reason, you can't own a firearm, and you're walking that fine line, you've got 
two things stacked against you if you do end up uh, in a situation and you end up having to go to court. So you've got to keep that in mind. You might want to go with a more conservative route, tune it down and, and be more careful. But that's an individual decision for everyone to make. Um, if you go with the firearm, uh, you've, you just like every firearm, you know, user, you have all of those risks. And so the idea of the less lethal in my mind is to minimize the risk, uh, to deescalate, to, to decrease the legal risk, uh, and to do so without increasing my personal bodily harm risk. Um, so if you make the right decision, and the odds are and the statistics are in your favor that if you choose this, you'll be making the right choice. And if you choose this only under certain criteria that you think through, I, I suggest everybody make a list. Uh, these are the criteria of the situations where I would pull the lethal. I would use my Glock or my whatever is your preference for a pistol. Um, and I would make a list of all the things that I would use my less lethal for. And and then, I, and then within that, I would think about, do I want to tune this down for pepper balls or do I want to go with, with jewels or Canada riot balls or whatever is your projectile of choice? There's a lot of choices within that. But that decision making between the two, this gap is where I want to spend more time in the future because I don't know the answers. Uh, all I can think as a, as a new less lethal user and a relatively new firearm user, I am in the middle here and I want to use the right tool for the right situation. When the, when the time comes, I have to decide what am I going to grab? I, uh, I could grab both, but that's probably not practical. Uh, in a perfect situation, you would have both on you. So maybe that is an option for some people. I'd be happy to hear comments. I really like the discussions and the input from everyone because I don't have all the answers. I, I consider my job here and, and with this channel is to uh, raise questions, uh, stimulate discussion. Uh, I'm not an absolute authority on any of these topics, but I am capable of analyzing what's out there and looking at the information and seeing the gaps in the literature and the information and what topics we need to, to talk about more in order to improve less lethal. Uh, firearms, they're, they're done. Uh, everyone, this is heavily saturated. I'm not in any way going to try to shoot these and compare uh, compared to the experts. Less lethals, I, I don't consider myself an expert either, but I know enough about these to know when someone is telling me hype and things that are not reality and things that are uh, more realistic. And and these are these are good, but they're not um, unicorns and rainbows. They're not perfect. They they the failure rate for the less lethals is is reasonable. Uh, but the higher you tune them up, the failure rate gets higher. And just like firearms, they have a failure rate, but firearm failure rates um, are quite quite low compared to less lethals. And um, the number of shots that you can pass through here versus here before you have a failure or a serious problem uh, is not comparable. Um, so that's the, the one thing that you have to keep in mind. There is a there is a, a maintenance and repair level of, of commitment that it takes for less lethal, whereas the firearm, you can clean it easily. This thing is very easy to field strip and clean. Uh, there's people everywhere that can uh, do repairs and cleaning for you. Uh, you just drop it off, pick it up. These things, it's very specialized. You, you really need to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, you can't rely on other people. If you do, you're paying a premium for what is really not that hard. You just have to learn it from YouTube videos. Um, same thing for parts. If you want to buy parts for your less lethal and you want to get them, uh, you might have to pay a premium for them because they're all limited supplies and they're only available in certain uh, secondary markets. And, and that's okay. But uh, if you want to get them, like, for example, directly from Pepperball, it's really challenging without sending the whole thing back in, and uh, it's very burdensome and cumbersome, whereas there are other options for getting parts. Uh, luckily for these, a lot of the parts are completely interchangeable with First Strike FSC, uh, and the paintball shops are filled, you know, off the shelf. You can buy most of the parts, but there are, there are a few that 
I have upgraded with that are unique. And, and so that's something you have to keep in mind. Whereas if you, you had to choose, you know, one or the other, and you, you can have both, um, the firearm, of course, is the most popular choice by far. If you look at the numbers of videos, the number of literature, if you just do Google searches, firearms win hands down every time, uh, and they're the most abundant. I don't know the number, 300 million plus in the United States. Um, less lethals is a very niche market, but it is a very unique uh, tool, and it is a very attractive tool. You can practice with these at home, so many advantages. Um, but my original topic about different situations, uh, use video surveillance when you can, use your eyes and ears, uh, make lists so you know in a particular scenario, this is a risk that I need to go for this or this. Uh, think these things through. Uh, and then as I think things through, I'm gonna update and provide more information in the future. I look forward to feedback and I really appreciate all of the um, participation by everyone. And I, and I really um, want to promote the less lethal field and make it better. And the way you make something better is by positive, constructive criticism. And I hope that it's helpful to you. And we'll see you in the next one.